Hello everyone, my name is Nicholas Reed from Reed Corporate and on behalf of DevEx Resources, ASX ticker DEV, it's a great pleasure to welcome you all to this investor and shareholder webinar. Thanks very much for joining us on a Monday. I'm very pleased to have DevEx's Managing Director, Brendan Bradley, join us here in Perth this morning. DevEx has plenty going on at the moment up in the Northern Territory. It's in the midst of an expanded drilling program at the high-grade Narbalek Uranium Project. In Queensland, it has an emerging ionic clay-hosted rare earths discovery at the Kennedy Project, where the drill rig is also turning. And it's recently added to its exploration pipeline with an exciting nickel sulphide project near Kalgoorlie in WA and a district-scale uranium project in the Northern Territory. Added to all of this, it's just unveiled a $21.1 million capital raising backed by its chairman and major shareholder, Tim Greuter. That includes a fully underwritten entitlements issue for shareholders. Brendan's going to step us through all of these exciting developments via a short page turn presentation that you can follow on your webinar browser. I'm then going to join him for Q&A. And I invite everyone listening to please send in your questions, use the Q&A tab on your browser, and we'll make sure that we put all of them to Brendan. So without further ado, it's my great pleasure to uh, welcome Brendan to the podium to run us through the DevX story. Welcome, Brendan. Thanks, Nick. And thank you to the team at Resources Rising Stars for the opportunity to present DevX Resources here to you today. This presentation has been uploaded on uh, the ASX platform and also the company's website, which I uh, implore you to go have a look at. Uh, it includes our company disclaimer, a usual company disclaimer, which I urge you to read at your own leisure. So DevX Resources is in the minerals discovery business, and our core goal is to deliver discovery drill holes for our shareholders. To achieve this, what we've done is we've brought together a portfolio of high quality exploration projects located in several of Australia's most sought after exploration regions, each with their own unique merits, opportunities for success. And I've said this before, but I emphasize it now, is it, they, these are very unique projects, whether in Western Australia, where we're exploring for massive nickel copper sulfide mineralization in several endowed terrains, or over in North Queensland, where we're exploring for rare earth mineralization. What we've done is we've taken a conceptual target that we identified, and this year we've gone out there to drill and we're now starting to show great results. What we're seeing at, at the Kennedy Project in North Queensland is an extensive area of surface rare earths and clays, ionic absorption rare earth type of mineralization. And we've got a drill rig out there at the moment. We're drilling that target, we're stepping out, we wanna understand the great scale. And it is a unique opportunity for our shareholders as the drilling continues during the next couple of months. Of course, the spotlight is naturally on DevEx Resources, Narblek Uranium Project, located in the Northern Territory. DevEx's project up at Narblek is situated and surrounds the historical high-grade uranium mine at Narblek, which was mined in 1980. The project is, represents a unique opportunity for DevEx shareholders. We've been out there this year, we're drilling that project, we're drilling targets surrounding the historical Narblek uranium mine. We represent a, that unique opportunity is how many other companies are out there exploring for high grade uranium and how many other companies are out there delivering exciting results as what we've been putting on the market over the last couple of months. We've got two drill rigs that are on site at the moment and we're now turning our focus to following up on those results that we've been announcing to market over the last couple of months. We've got several targets we're focusing on, and over the next month, we look forward to seeing what those two draw rigs are going to deliver as we start to look at continuity of mineralization, scale of mineralization, and just generally broaden our, our portfolio around the existing deposit. And of course, with the uptick in the uranium price and the need to get going as we expand our uranium portfolio, we recently announced a deal within the uh, Murphy West Uranium Project, where we're earning into there in a very early stage exploration opportunity, but a large scale. There's over 5,000 square kilometers of tenure. We need to do surface low hanging fruit geophysics, looking for surface expressions of uranium mineralization in a well-known province for, that's got the potential to host uranium mineralization. So it is all about momentum for DevEx resources. And naturally, we're building a team, an exciting group of team and explorers within the portfolio. And, and it's, of course, as Nick alluded to, it's backed by our major chairman and major shareholder, Tim Goida, who is sitting there also supporting the DevEx resources process. We announced the recent uh, capital raising, both the 
uh, placement of over 10, just over $10 million. And similarly, the entitlements offer for our shareholders as well to participate in. And that gives us the war chest that we need to continue this momentum. Our shareholders can see that momentum and what we've been doing this year and the desire to keep that momentum do as we that keep that momentum going as we continue to deliver expiration results that we've been reporting recently. So what our intention is, is this got two rigs out at Nardlec at the moment, a draw rig at, at Kennedy Project and keep going uh, for as long as we can. So focusing in on the projects, uh, taking you through to the Nablek project and moving across to Kennedy and then likewise to Western Australia. The Nablek project is located within the Alligator Rivers Uranium province. This is a uranium province and called the uranium province for good reason, with over 500 million pounds of uranium defined in either current resources or historical mining. It boasts some very significant uranium deposits. These are hard rock uranium deposits, conventional mining, such as the Ranger uranium mine, which has produced over 300 million pounds of uranium at a grade of 0.2% uranium or 2000 ppm. This is an operation that had been mining for well over 45 years uh, for, for through the ups and downs and the swings and roundabouts of the uranium price for its time and been successful for its shareholders over many times. All the large Jabaluka uranium deposit located to the north and again, a high grade deposit of over 300 million pounds defined in the current resources. But of course, DevEx Resources is exploring its own projects surrounding the historical Narblek uranium mine. This mine, again, 24 million pounds at 1.84%, mined in 1980, was well regarded as Australia's highest grade uranium deposit. And we've got three granted exploration tenements, including one granted mining lease, which is the Narblek mining lease. This is our core focus for this year, and it remains our core focus uh, for the remainder of the year as we continue to drill and pursue the uranium mineralization that we're now defining. And just to explain to our shareholders really what a prize looks like for DevEx, this is the Nablek uranium mine that was mined out in 1980. You can see where the pit lies, but I draw your attention to scale and what that 24 million pounds looks like. You're looking at a scale bar down there of 20 to 25 meters. On the left-hand side is a long section from, from south on the left-hand side to north and the cross section on the right-hand side. It just gives you a sense for what scale you need to do. All the dots represent drill hole intercepts on the left-hand side with a snapshot of cross section. If you're drilling on 100 meter line spacing, you can very easily drill one intercept and drill well beyond the, the zone of Narblek mineralization. So with the intercepts that we're getting, understanding that sense of scale, it really justifies why we're stepping in and drilling tight space drilling, why we're stepping down from 100 meter line spaces to 50 and possibly even down to 25 over the coming month. So Narblek, the picture in the background that you see there is the Narblek area, the mines are up in the top of the image and our exploration camp is located on the Narblek airstrip, which was put in for the mining of Narblek. The uranium price sets the scene. Why would we be exploring for uranium? Besides the turning sentiment as the world looks to decarbonize, naturally the uranium price says it all. That's why we've been out there drilling a lot of holes this year. And with the results we're getting, that's why we want to continue going. This uptick in the uranium price puts DevEx and its shareholders in a unique environment where we're one of the very few ASX companies actively drilling right now for high grade uranium. So we look forward to that measure. Likewise, with the photo, you can see the train. It's not mountainous train, it's not helicopter moving drill rigs around helicopters. Where that's why we're able to drill so many holes into this project over the coming year, over this year, and also the coming year to come. So he's focusing on where DevEx Resources is currently active, starting uh, around the historical Narblek uranium mine, we're, we're principally targeted on two key structures known to host uranium mineralization. That is the Narblek fault, which naturally hosts the Narblek uranium mine. We've got intercepts to the north of Narblek uranium mine along that Narblek fault and similarly to the south. And then likewise, stepping out to the northeast to the U40, U42 structure or the U40 fault zone, where again, we were announcing results last month, some significant results from drilling as we step away from some high grade mineralization, which we've been discovering recently. So starting at U40 and then going back to Narblek itself, this, this is a, a plan image showing you the drilling intercepts that we've recently announced. We started exploring around U40 this year, really for the first time in earnest. And that followed our understanding that we believe that the faults that are there are north-south. Previously, we had forts that they were east, north, northeast or northwest, 
but we're now seeing from our drilling and from the success of what we're actually announcing to the market very clearly that these are north-south trends. We're following up on previous pre-Fukushima drill hole intercepts like seven metres at 6% uranium, comes together with some gold, some platinum and palladium, but we're pursuing the uranium mineralisation. And now we've expanded the footprint enough of the U-40 system for over 500 metres with drilling to the north and to the south on broad centres. We started drilling on 100 metres. We're stepping into 50 metre line spacing here. And then we also need to step out further to the south as we extend to the south. But the drill rig is expected to be up there in the next few weeks to focus on infield drilling around this uranium mineralisation so we understand the continuity of the mineralisation, the potential scale of the mineralisation as we get to understand its controls and naturally step out further to the south of some of the high grade results that we've been announcing to the market. Both broad mineralisation, such as 40 metres at just over 0.1% or 1,000 ppm uranium, together with high grade results, including three metres at 1% uranium equivalent that we're getting from our downhole gamma probes. We're naturally waiting for assay results to come in, but as those that follow DevEx understand, when we bring in the gamma results and the uranium equivalent, and then similarly, we, as the assay results come in, we continue to report those results. And so we've got a continuous zone going to the south of this mineralization, and now we need to step in. We need to drill on these sections, and again, emphasizing scale, and those intercepts that you see there on, on the image is what looks like an up dip. We need to drill up dip of those, those intercepts, including that three meters at 1% uranium equivalent. We need to drill underneath it. We need to drill between it and between these intercepts. So we've got a lot of drilling we still need to be doing over the coming month. And likewise, it's further to the south. As we follow this fault to the south, we need to step drilling out and drill on broad spaces. Where's that fault going? Do we understand where that fault is? How do we define that fault as we go? So it is busy times for DevEx, and that's why we've now brought a second rig to site, and we've got two drill rigs out there drilling at the moment. And bringing ourselves back into the Narblek area, the exact area around the, around the historical Narblek open pit that's there in the centre of the image, the colourful graphics underneath it is just simple ground gravity work that we're doing. It's enabled us now to understand the core control to the uranium mineralization at Narblek, where these structures lie, where they trend, and what does that mean for the drilling results that we're now getting. This image is brand new. It, we, we've been doing it over the last month, and it gives us the confidence to pursue the mineralization that we're getting with the drill holes as we follow these structures, both north and south of Narblek. Both at Narblek South, where last year's results we were reporting to the market, we can now see that fault zone continuing to the south. We need to drill deeper diamond holes into that fault zone. And then likewise to the north of Narblek, at Narblek North, where recently we intersected over just over four metres of 0.3% uranium or over 3,000 uh, ppm uranium right on the edge of the mining lease boundary. So the blue outline on that image shows you the Narblek mining lease. We need to follow up on those and pursue those intercepts back onto the Narblek mining lease. We need to understand is it continuous is there a great spot? There's a lot there's a lot of space around those drill holes at the moment and follow up. And I know the drill rigs moved to there at the moment and it's plans to be drilling that area over the coming weeks. Recently, we announced to the market in the Northern Territory an earning deal on the Murphy West Uranium Project, located south to the southeast of the Narblek, uh, Narblek Project, located in a different area of stratigraphy um, known for hosting the West Moreland uranium deposits on the Queensland side of the border. So where our project is in the Northern Territory and the, the geology there is split by the Northern Territory Queensland border. On the Queensland, there are known uranium deposits and resources, including the West Moreland uranium deposit with well over sort of 40 million, 40 to 50 million pounds of uranium at 0.09% uh, uranium or 900 ppm uranium. This continues and that this continuity of uranium mineralization as evidenced by those, those yellow dots and prospects, we see a large continuity of uranium of, of the same geology continuing to the west within the Murphy West project. The area is underexplored. It's had very little early stage base level exploration over this area. This is over 5,000 square kilometers of explorable ground that we plan to be going in there with airborne geophysics, including radiometrics, looking for near surface signatures of uranium mineralization, which we can then take advantage of and get on the ground and follow up with exploration activities as we develop this project and build the story up. And so it does give us an early stage opportunity and give DevEx shareholders that opportunity 
in, in a rising uranium market, it's an exciting opportunity. Moving across to North Queensland to the Kennedy Rare Earth Project. As I mentioned at the start, this is a conceptual target that we put out, put our drill rigs on this year, and we started drilling this conceptual target, and we've been quite enthused by the results that we've been getting on broad space drilling. We're seeing an extensive zone of rare earth mineralization located in surficial clays. Most of the results are from surface. We're seeing rare earth oxide results over 1,000 ppm from surface. We've been backing that up with metallurgical work where we're seeing using ball of plate technology associated with are these ionic clays, will it leach with a very weak acid like a pH of four and will it quickly leach? And the metallurgical results that we've been announcing to the market is showing just that. We're seeing that surface clays, you only have to put it in for half an hour at a pH of four and a lot of the rare earths are already coming out already. So just urge you to go look at that and what's going on there. You can see from the scale bar down on the left-hand side or lower left-hand side, this is an extensive area and this is only part of where we're focused. We've got the draw rig out there now drilling on broad centers and is all of those orange colored units, which are the clays, will they be, extent will they be extensive? Will they be continuous for rare earth mineralization? And as I said, with the metallurgical work that we've been doing at Ansto, you can see the results of the metallurgical recoveries using a pH of four ammonia sulfate leach. It's key to that is, can you get these rare earths out cheaply and quickly? And can you move the clays through, move the clays over? And so what you're seeing in half an hour is you're getting between 30 to 40% recovery of key rare earth elements like dysprosium, tobidium, neodymium, and prosodymium. And similarly, if you drop the pH down to three, you can see a 10, or roughly a 10% increase. And then further to that, over 24 hours, you see continual increases. So how much toothpaste can you squeeze out of the tube? That's the opportunity. And that's what the drilling's designed about, is step out and scale. How big a scale is this opportunity? Where are the highest grades going to be? Where's that lie in this area? And so showing you where the drilling is that we announced to the market, we're planning to drill this whole area over the coming months on broad spaces to get a sense for the continuity of this rare earth mineralization, the thickness and the grade of this rare earth mineralization. And that's why the drill rig's out there at the moment and the team is also focused on this area at the Kennedy project. As Nick mentioned in the beginning, we're also lo always looking for options for our shareholders for discovery. We like exploring in well endowed terrains where there's the opportunity for discovery. We've done a, a, an earning agreement with Brightstar over the, uh, over the highway nickel project. We're looking to see, are there massive nickel sulfides in associated with this purple rock, the ultramafic or the highway ultramafic. We're exploring immediately north of known nickel, massive nickel sulfide occurrences. And what we wanna do in later this month and early next month is do ground EM, see if there's conductors, and then we're drilling. These are just very quick opportunities for DEVEC shareholders that we're hoping to sort of deliver with drill results if we can see that this conductors with the geophysics. And similarly with the Gonneville project uh, located to the south of DEVEX's sovereign project that we're exploring under a joint venture with ASQ. We've been exploring there for two years. We're looking for massive nickel sulfides. We're doing ground EM. We're waiting for the wheat belt, the typical cropping cycle to get back out, out there on the ground later this month continuing to look for massive nickel sulfide mineralization directly to the north of the known large occurrence of palladium and platinum and copper that Chalice discovered uh, several years ago. And we continue to explore that project. So what does it all mean for DevEx shareholders? Naturally, our core focus is on the Nablek Uranium project. We're getting the results that we're looking for. We're getting those results on multiple prospects. We've got two rigs out on site. We want to now not just move from conceptual targets, which is where we sort of started, what we're, we're focused on is the results that we're now getting this year. Now, how can we demonstrate continuity? How can we demonstrate scale? So let's get the rigs in and focus on these intercepts that we were reporting over the last couple of months, infill drill, step out around those intercepts and start to see how continuous is this uranium mineralization. 40 odd meters at over 0.1% is equally as important as three meters at 1%. We want to demonstrate scale and that's the opportunity for that project. That's why we've got two drill rigs on site. And likewise, that's why we're, we're focused on continuing drilling right through to the commencement of the wet season and possibly into it. And similarly at Kennedy, we've got the drill rigs on site, scale for our shareholders, and that's what's driving DEVEC. So it is about the drill rig. That's why we're raising the money 
those that follow Devex know that it's all about the draw rig. It's all about the results that you see at the drill at the drill bit. And as we continue to progress these projects, we look forward to continued results. Thanks, Nick, and thanks to Resources Rise and Stars. Thanks very much, Brendan. Wow, that was a quick run through. We appreciate that. Um, just a reminder to everyone listening, um, please send in your questions. This is an open forum. I'll get them on my phone right here, and uh, let's take advantage of uh, of having Brendan to uh, to answer them. So, Brendan, I might just start with a one from from myself. Just listening to your your discussion on Nardalek, it does really sound like you've you've got a much better understanding of the geology and the controls and the mineralisation there. What? How would you characterise what you're doing at the moment? Is it is it more resource drilling or is it still are you still looking for that step change discovery or both yeah look i think i think a, a couple of shareholders have asked this question we've moved from some geophysical targets where we think we've got a dot on a map and a circle and a structure and we've gone in and followed up on his, some historical results and we've able, those that follow us can see how we've been progressing this year with those results and you can see now that as we step out we're getting continued uranium mineralization. So we're actually growing previous drill hole intercepts and we're starting to say, okay, this is now, for example, at U40, extending uranium mineralization over 500 meters. We're still broad spaced. We're still on 100 meters to, five, to, to 50 meter line spacing. Now we need to infill drilling. What we and where we end up what is, comes down to those results and what the continuity looks like. So can we get to the stage where we want to be resource drilling? Well, I'm really keen to see how the next month's worth of drilling at U40 goes. And similarly, if we can follow that mineralization at Narblek North, directly north of the old mine, back onto the mining lease, it gives us that ability to really go at it hard. So I'm, I, I would say we're sitting in that transitional zone between early stage, we're now proving that this mineralization is going, and then can we get continuity that then focuses the draw rig to really go intensely at these prospects? So there is a question here, which is, I guess, a follow-up to that, Brennan, to put you on the spot. Um, investor said, when could you expect to have a, a maiden resource for Nardalu? Oh, look, I think our core goal here is to pursue the mineralisation continuity. Your your view on where where those results are and what they're doing, you will see as we develop it. So I would say the answer is that that's the whole idea of the next round of drilling is, can we get that continuity so that we can then launch into infill drilling step out we right now we don't know whether that 500 meters is it or whether it's several kilometers and that's what the drilling needs to do so we can get a sense of scale for that drilling that we need to do as far as a focus effort and and similarly at kennedy the same position is we've got 25 kilometers by about 20 kilometers of of these prospective clays going at broad spacing what does it mean from to answer that question What's the density we would need to do? We need to demonstrate continuity and then we can really focus in on that area. So, you know, over the next sort of 12 to 12 months, that's sort of what our intention is to be getting towards. Just a quick follow up again on Narvalek. How much more drilling can you get completed this year? Um, so how long is until the wet season stops you and what's the sort of the outlook in terms of assays, timing of assays from here? Sure. Well, We've got two drill rigs on site and they're going for it right now. We're always watching the weather gods that above us and the like for, for the oncoming wet season as it is. We're hoping for a later wet season as predicted. We normally drill right through to late November generally. Um, we, we're hoping to be doing the same and we'll just keep going until it's just unfeasible to continue at that point. But, you know, assay results, as we continue to report the results, assay results are generally about a six to seven week turnaround. Um, and we just continue to go. And then so by April, when the dry season hits again, we're just back at it. But, you know, with a month and a half and then two very, very keen drill rigs and a team on site, we're, we're just pushing at it. And, you know, these rigs move fast. So a diamond rig and an RC rig, that RC rig plows away. So we're still looking forward to seeing a lot of drilling at U40, Narblek North, and the other prospects, including Narblek South, and, and likewise at U42. Thanks, Brendan. And let's jump on to a couple of online questions that have just come in here. Um, so the first one here is that uh, with DevEx holding over 6 million plus shares in Intex, what is the reason for the investment in Intex? And are there plans to use their clean energy technology for the Narbalek project? And also there's a follow up, does DevEx plan to increase, do you plan to in increase your stake in Intex? 
Oh, okay. Well, I, I think the first thing is NTEX, and there's a link to the website for NTEX for those that want to understand it. NTEX is a company that was based on a technology that was developed by DevEx uh, back in 2013 when we were called Uranium Equities. We did it in a joint venture with Cameco. We were looking at the extraction of uranium out of phosphate deposits and phosphoric acid plants because we know that uranium is in those and that we could commercially, potentially commercially extract uranium. We realized that it wasn't our core focus. And so NTEX was spun out in what was originally called FOSS Energy and that patent and technology sits with both FOSS Energy and Cameco. And again, go to the website to see about that technology. We like the technology and uranium price justifies why we like it as things grow and as things go. We certainly are still keen to see the development of that. And if we can follow that project with what we do and how we support it, then we would. Fantastic. Thanks, Brendan. Um, another online question here. What are the uranium deposit types that you're exploring for at Narbalek and Murphy West? Okay. Unconformity. Yeah. So, um, so the, they put it in a broad box, which is called unconformity type uranium deposits. You find them in only two jurisdictions, which is where we're exploring within the Alligator Rivers uranium province. And examples of that are, as that image right at the start shows, Jabaluka, uh, the Ranger uranium mine, and also the Narlek, the unconformity type. And the only other place you find them is in northern Canada in the Athabasca Basin, where some of the big uranium mines that are still production in production with Cameco are located like Cigar Lake, MacArthur River, and some of the new emerging discoveries like Arrow from NextGen. So that's the general broad position. At Murphy West, that's generally called the Westmoreland style, and that's what you can see on the, on the Queensland side. But we believe it's equally prospective for unconformity uh, Alligator River style uranium deposits. There's very similar age uranium occurrences, very similar geology that occurs, and we think that they're equally targetable for what we're exploring for, like at Narblek as well. Fantastic. Thanks, Brendan. A uh, quick one here. When do you expect to drill at the Highway Nickel Project? I'd say we, we plan to be doing the geophysics first, and that's slated for later this month and early November. We're looking to see, are there conductors? Can we see the conductors north of the known nickel sulfide deposits? If we see the conductors, then we're keen to get the rig out as quickly as possible. So that'll be driven by... Uh, by the results of the geophysics. The geophysics yep. 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 It's a quick... Get in there. Can we get conductors? Let's drill them. If there's no conductors, then let's stop. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, another question here. Any ideas on which two directors are going to take a seat on LSA, Lachlan Star? Uh, and what is the ultimate, uh, sorry, what is the, um, I'm not quite sure that, what is the ultimate uh, going over there with two directors take? to take over the, the direction of LSA in the future. I'm not quite sure what uh, okay. well, you, but look, I, I get that it. was just, the transaction with the copper. Was yeah, that, yeah, so yeah. Um, the Juni project in New South Wales, we've done a deal with Lachlan Star, where the, the, the Juni projects, all of the Juni projects, the Cobar projects, all of our New South Wales, we're joint venturing it to Lachlan Star Resources, where Lachlan Star have, have bought those projects. We retain a royalty. Uh, we also retain equity in Lachlan Star as a result of that of just over 30%. Lachlan Star have got cash in the bank and they've got a keen exploration team that want to take that project. This gives us the ability to focus on where our heart has been driven towards the Narblick Uranium project and what we're seeing at Kennedy. We, we're setting Lachlan Star up and we're hoping that Lachlan Star will just propel forward. If we, have, we retain the right to put our, our directors on to the Lock and Star board, and we plan to do that, and that's uh, just not in the public domain, and, and but soon to be announced, I'm sure. Thank you, Brendan. Just a similar question to the ones we had at Narbalek, just turning to the rare earths in Queensland, any ideas on the timing of when you could potentially have a resource on that on that project? Oh, right now we want, again, for, the, for those that love to see the resource, which is ultimately our goal, right? That's definitely what we want to do is we're drilling a broad area of over 20 kilometers by 20 kilometers or 25 by 20. We want to see where those hot spots are. So if we can see the hot spots, you know, it, at the moment, what we've been demonstrating is there's rare earths and them clays from surface so far and all the drill holes that we're doing. If we can get the hot spots, bearing in mind what 20 by 25 kilometers look like, that's the area we want to focus on. Now, once we focus on that, 
we can then start looking at the density that's needed for what a resource would look like. And of course, we're looking at the grades and the recoveries and the metallurgy as goes with it. So that's, that's where we're going and scale is definitely on our side. Excellent, thanks, Brendan. Uh, just another one online here. Uh, from which company are you earning your interest in the Highway Nickel Project? Uh, Brightstar, so you can go to Brightstar's uh, website to see that and including our announcement for the earning that we put out about a month and a half ago on Brightstar, maybe two months ago. Um, that's the option value that we've got. Fantastic. Um, I think that's all the online questions. I'll just uh, we'll just give it another minute or two. Perhaps while we do that, Brendan, maybe probably a lot, lot of shareholders listening, you've announced a, a placement and an entitlement issue on Friday. Perhaps if you could just quickly step through some of the key points in that and, and the timing um, and what shareholders should, should be looking out for in terms of um, correspondence from the company. Yeah, sure. I mean, we've, we've placed two uh, institutional high net worth uh, people for the placement to get $10 million. And then we're also put it out there for our entitlements offer for our shareholders to participate in at 30 cents. Uh, that then gives us the cash that we need to go to keep propelling ourselves forward on both the uranium project at Narblek and similarly at Kennedy and, and the other opportunities, but that's where the focus lies. What can shareholders look forward to as far as news flow? That's what the draw rigs are out there for. That's why we're drilling the targets that we're drilling at the moment. Fantastic. And the entitlements issue wraps up around early November from memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. early November for the entitlements offer. Excellent. Okay, look, I think we've, we've exhausted all our online questions. So thank you very much to everyone who listened in and particularly those who sent questions in. Brendan, that was a very informative run through. Um, it sounds like there's lots going on and uh, definitely a stock to watch over the next uh, the next few months and beyond. Yeah, no, definitely. Look, there's lots going on and we've got an established team of geologists out there in the field right now, putting, putting themselves on the rigs, making sure that we get that news flow as we get it. Thanks very much. Thank you to Brendan for coming in and catching up with us this morning. Thank you to everyone for tuning in. Um, DevX is a company that uh, is doing lots of things, as you can hear. So uh, definitely a stock to watch. And we look forward to keeping you informed about all that activity and more over the next few months and beyond. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. And thank you for joining our webinar this morning.